<laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good I one. knew this was going to be a good dragon talk. You had a feeling. I had a feeling. I got a feeling. It's sunny out. It's Friday. I, you're like the fourth person who's been like, today is a good day in Seattle because that shining sun, orb is there. We, and it's been years since it's been <laughs> We're that so high. easy to please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the sun does wonders for our little brains. A week ago, we were in freezing cold Lake Geneva. Exactly. And so. that did so many different. It was well, it was generally sunny when we were there, but it was the uh, uh, oh, snow oh. on the ground everywhere, right? And so the wind in your face. There was a lot of wind in our faces. It was no point. Bueno. It was so so cold. So but you, speaking of butts, you've got an amazing banana story that you're going to tell while Good I'm segment. while I'm eating this. Greg's eating a banana, which reminds me, last night the conversation <laughs> in our house turned to farts, as it often <laughs> does. And I said to Quinn, yo, when your dad farts, it, it goes like this. <laughs> I just tried to make the most annoying sound I could. And then Quinn goes, yeah, <laughs> when I fart, it goes, banana, banana. <laughs> that is the best thing I've ever heard. I mean, that would take a lot of like muscle power to be able to. <laughs> To pull okay, that off, I, banana, if banana. You were just like somewhere with Quinn hanging out, and you just heard banana, banana. <laughs> and then you're like, oh gosh, it's like a weird <laughs> ringtone on your phone or something. <laughs> it smells Ooh. like yellow Yaffy Taffy Did, in here. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Did someone just say, say banana? Yeah, my butt did. <laughs> That's right. This is Dragon <laughs> the official Dungeons and, and Dragons, Dragons podcast. podcast. We're so glad that we're we're here to be able to share Woo! these stories with you. So how are enjoy it's, that? Banana. I'm almost done. It's the Ides of March today. Did you right? know that? Yes. Yeah, that means someone's gonna uh, have a meeting today, <laughs> and that meeting is going to go poorly for. Someone? Mm hmm. Maybe? Mm hmm. Yep. Well, I don't have any meetings today. Clear schedule. This is it. Clear it out. That's I, the way to do it. I am meeting a friend for drinks after. Uh oh. Work. I, well, I, how close mm. is this friend of yours? Very close. Uh oh. Like well, one of my best friends. Well, that's kind of suspect. Are you the console of a, uh, you know, Europe spanning, continent spanning empire? By any no, chance? but I do manage my neighborhood um, Facebook group page. That is basically the same it's thing. Kind of the same thing. <laughs> and she is my neighbor. <gasps> but if anything happens oh to me, you guys, her name is Jen. <laughs> <laughs> and she lives at dot dot dot. And she lives next door. <laughs> That yeah. now I want to remake like you know there's been all those like Shakespeare remakes right? of like you modern know, day modern day type things I want to be like the Facebook group you know got together and it's yes. it's not a like, democracy anymore yeah, we're not she keeps trying to borrow gardening equipment <laughs> she returned my rake with some damage friends <laughs> West Seattleites give me your ladders countrymen give me your I need to clean my gutters <laughs> <laughs> and then it turns into a musical. All of yeah. a sudden, my gut hurts. Everything does. That's banana, good. banana. <laughs> <laughs> so are you the Julius Caesar in this situation? Hope not. Yeah. We got to get the fart bananas in there as well. Yeah. That's what Shakespeare needed. A little, well, I mean, there were, to be honest, there's, there's a lot of farts in, his, in, right. in, in Shakespeare. I meant more bananas. Okay. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Have you even discovered bananas by that point? Probably not. I don't know. Were there even monkeys at that point? <laughs> <laughs> they just had was not. Shakespeare even real? <laughs> well, that's a whole <laughs> other can of worms uh, that we'll be talking about in, uh, in this our episode. Lore You Should Know <laughs> segment about was Shakespeare, was Shakespeare real. real? Uh, no, he was actually Morden Gannon. Nice. Traveling across the plains uh, to tell us all about the fun stuff. So we are back in the studio for uh, this recording of Dragon Talk. Woo! We are talking to Arnie Kneecamp today at 1 p.m. Pacific time. He is the co-creator and lead host of Hello from the Magic Tavern. So funny. Which is an awesomely funny podcast. Definitely adult theme, so I definitely wouldn't uh, recommend it if you've got uh, uh, little ones listening. Uh, you know, they're not like, you know, terrible, but it is for sure an adult improv comedy podcast. But that's all set up from, uh, uh, you know, in a really interesting way that... Uh, Arnie, Very as the cool. host, kind of plays like a, a version of himself who uh, gets into a magical land called Foon. Uh, and then he interviews um, 
you know, fantasy characters and tropes and, uh, you know, gets into uh, really amazingly funny conversations yep. with them. Uh, but all, you know, not necessarily poking fun, satirizing the fantasy storytelling tropes that we love and use in so many D&D games. So yes. they found a few, um, you know, amazing characters in there. Uh, Chris Perkins was recently on there as a guest when uh, Arnie and uh, his crew was here for PodCon uh, back in January. Chris oh, played that's what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. He played uh, Wee Woo, a, uh, a Modron, a, mo- a monodrone. Oh, uh, which was which was really the uh, role he amazing. was born to play. <laughs> exactly. What's he? You know, he was channeling uh, his uh, his inner Maz, who Maz who loves the the, yes. the Modrons uh, as well. So yeah, good stuff. Check that out uh, again. Well. Not um not for 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 kids. Uh, especially even in that in that specific interview, there's definitely goes veers to a couple of uh, very adult places, I will say, but oh. funny adult places. So you know, okay, check it out if you can. All right, but we will be talking to Arnie uh, at one, and then I'll be talking to Chris Perkins uh, for some lore you should know segments uh, at two p.m. Pacific time. Cool. So you can get out of here after that. That's I'm when your gonna. meetings. That's when your meetings can that's can right. happen. That's when my other meetings happen. Yeah. My off-site. Meeting <laughs> at two bar <laughs> at two bar. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Speaking of adult content, ah, ah. yeah, that's a good one. Plenty, that's a keeper. Thanks. I'm gonna write that one down. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we you know, we like to hang out and talk with you guys. How has your week been happening? We were in uh, Gary Con very recently. Yep, yep, that happened, that occurred. It did. It feels like a long time ago, but it wasn't. Gosh, I know, right. This did week you, went did, by fast. Did you have fun at Gary Con? I did. I got to play a lot of D and D. You ran uh, games, which was awesome. Yeah, yeah. For for people who got to sign up and enjoy. So I like that. Were they excited to be in your game? They were. They were uh, excited. And we were excited to preview uh, 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 a part of Ghost of Salt Marsh called uh, Salvage Operation. Yeah. Which um, is fantabulous and really interesting. You got to play that too. I did. Yeah. That is no joke, man. There was that no was, joking about that it. That was danger. On the high seas. It was. A lot of uh, Sahuigans and spiders and... So many spiders. Uh, the lovers of Loth yep. out there. Yep. I Demon like Queen. We like her. Yeah. Yeah. And we spoke to uh, a lot of amazing artists and creators. That was really cool. Uh, who were uh, you know, part of D&D's history. And we'll be... We haven't really kind of said, but we're going to be releasing the those interviews. I think we did like eight or nine uh, while we were there. Uh, you know, some of them... Longer than others, and uh, some of them about c- people in the community who are helping out there at the oh, event. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we're still trying to, trying to figure out exactly how we're going to package all that and get it out to the Dragon Talk listening audience. Uh, but when we do, uh, it'll be it'll be near. Uh, you know, w- you'll be the first to hear it <laughs> here on this podcast. Um, but uh, but one of the one of the things we're talking about is doing like kind of bonus episodes and and not do a full. Um, you know, kind of Dragon Talk episode around them, but give them out. I'll give a little preamble. Uh, uh, introing and outroing them, but because they are so much about history and, and where D and D came from, um, it's less about timely trying to get it out. Honestly, so we might uh, parse that out over the next few months, and yep. and you'll get a little bit of D and D history in addition to our normal weekly episodes here on Dragon Talk. Yep, Sound that like was really fun. It was fun. Yeah, who is your favorite person to to, to talk to? That's not fair. I mean, who is your uh, uh, who, who who? Yeah, I don't know. What, what were some of the the favorite highlights. favorite moments. Yeah, I liked. Um, I really liked talking to to people about these the iconic places of D and D's history, and mm-hmm. then actually getting to go see them. Right. That was really cool. Like yeah, like we talked to to Mike Carr about uh, uh, being at the first Gen the Con first Gen at Horticultural Con. Hall, and, and then we got to drive that. by and be like, "There's Hor- Horticultural and Hall." And just peeking in the windows because it wasn't open. Peeking in the windows. Of you it broke and in. Trying. Yeah. Well, I was with Merle's. He was like, you want to get in here? Let's get in. <laughs> Let's here. get in here. Let's He's like, it. he rolled the D20 on the ground. He's like, all right, I picked the lock. Yeah. And exactly. nothing happened. Yeah. And like, what? I don't. It's weird when it doesn't happen. It doesn't just like. Do and it. the first. And who was it that told us? I think it was Zeb Cook that yeah. told us a story about um, somebody who fell through uh, the yes. ballroom. And to see, like, there's the building where that happened. Oh, I didn't get to see that. Where is that? That's the first offices. Yeah. Where is that? It's like right around the corner from Gary's house. Oh, really? Yeah, it's right downtown. It's where the there's a chocolate shop there in the bottom okay. floor now, and then it just looks like it's probably offices or apartments above it. Oh, no way. Cause it's one of the only tall-ish buildings in downtown Lake Geneva. Okay. And that's the other thing is like, you know, you think of, you know, not like Seattle's a huge big town or anything like that, but, you know, you're like, oh, you're thinking on that scale, and no, yeah. it is a very tiny 
it Midwestern very town. Flat. Yes, very uh, flat. Very That's flat. Beautiful. Yeah, it's got a really cool downtown. It's very yeah. quaint in the in the downtown area, yep. but it's not like it's sprawling everywhere. No, Everything no, no. is within like a you know a 0.5 mile radius. And, but our Lyft driver said that in the summertime mm-hmm. it takes like 30 minutes to just drive through downtown which really? is only really like four or five blocks yeah it's so crowded interesting that whole place just explodes in the summer it's a it's a great uh you know destination for chicagoans and uh, these to go the one of our lyft drivers he was like oh yeah something's going on in town this weekend i don't know it's like some convention for like it's not it's not for dungeons and dragons but it's like something else. And we were like, actually, it is exactly for Dungeons and Dragons. And we, we were laughing at like, he was so specifically wrong in like <laughs> what he chose. It's like not, I mean, it's not like uh, bananas. It's something else. Like he, you're like, no, dude, the you're, exact you're, thing that you specifically said it wasn't is exactly what it was. The thing that it actually is, right. And he told us that he grew up in Lake Geneva. Really? And it, we both found it odd that he didn't, play D and D because he was like he's like our age so he was coming of age in the same time that like you know D and D was coming out he was yeah. a, he was a young a young lad and he was like no I I didn't I didn't know that was actually from around here oh what? really yeah huh it is I mean we get we're we're definitely in the world and we know a lot of of, of what's happening with Dungeons and Dragons but it is uh, sometimes hard uh, or or uh, you know it's important for us to realize that. Our community as, is as strong as it is, and how uh, we know what's going on within that. It's not everybody does, you know. Yeah, exactly. Even so much of like, Growing oh, you know. But I they were a major employer. They were, or yeah. even like the biggest at one point in that small town. Yeah. So it still just surprised me that he didn't know this company. I know. Yeah. But did, did you learn him? Did you? Did yeah, tell him, tell him schooled all him it? good. You're like, this is what I learned from uh, uh, Darlene, the artist. This is what I learned from Margaret Wise. This is what I learned yes. from all these amazing people. Darlene was also wonderful to talk to. Yeah, she really was. What? Who? What were some of your highlights? Um, I I like talking to Darlene because you got like that sense of like graphic design and how much she brought to the table. Uh, yep. And she, I mean, we said it during the interview, but she reminded us very much of uh, Shauna Narciso, our current, uh, you know, uh, creative art director uh, yep. for, for everything D&D. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I just love uh, talking to her. I got her coloring books. Uh, oh, you uh, did? And yeah, I gave it to Edna and of course drew in uh, one already. And she showed me the one that uh, has a uh, the the woman uh, or the girl uh, uh, skateboarding. That's the word I'm trying to remember. Oh, so she did cute. that one first. I'm like, oh my God, that's so great. Quinn Star, he did the cover. Yeah. He was like, I'm going to make this a green dragon because it's Cassie. <laughs> I'm like, how do you know that about green dragons? And then did this go into the... No, it's a different, totally different conversation. <laughs> the fart the, conversation? This is like 90% of the conversations in He's our He's a home. gassy dragon. He's a gassy dragon. <laughs> like, how do you know about that about oh, green they dragons? Know. They know. He was like, from the D&D books. Like, how, how do you know how to read all of a sudden? Good on you, Bart, for for making sure, and you for for what talking through. What all makes of you think that it's Bart? I I don't want. Well, I mean, I, I he definitely tries to instill uh, a love of D and D in there, and I think you do too. No, he does. Yeah. I definitely do. Yeah, I think it's important. It's true. I want him. I really want him to play D and D. I know, right? Yes. But you don't want to be like. I mean, it's this child rearing stuff you don't want to be like do the thing that we love right because then it'll be like no i'm gonna rebel against you and start going to church you know you're like you know you don't want to necessarily like go full on uh uh, uh you know you have to do right. what, what no. mommy and daddy love no he doesn't right good yeah. no. that didn't we talk about my parenting style of telling him no <laughs> yes exactly it works that he can't do the thing yeah and then he'll do it because he wants to do it <laughs> I'm so good. 60% of the time, it works every time. Maybe 6%. <laughs> so we uh, should do our real intro at this point. You want to, you want to, yes. that, that was, I mean, because we, we, I think we already did that for our, our, our Jim Zub episode that just uh, uh, went out on the our Yeah, that, talk about a bonus episode. Yeah, right. That came out, came together fast. Yep. Shout out to Ryan Marth. Yay. Ooh, we talked to Jim Zub on Wednesday of this week. So that was two days ago. Yeah. And then and we, it's already out. we got it up uh, Yeah, yesterday that was afternoon. That a fun conversation. It was a really fun conversation. And he was also on Dragon Plus That's with right. Bart. So if you want more Jim Zub, you can watch that episode. That's the way to do it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It was great. And uh, all the amazing things that he's putting together. So yeah, let's do. You want to do our real intro? You want for, you want for this episode? For this episode that's upcoming yep. with uh, Arnie Neekamp. Yeah. You want to do it? Do it. All right. 
Welcome to Dragon Talk. Thank you, everyone, and welcome. I am Greg Tito, and uh, applause starter is... Shelly Mazzanova. Hi, Shelly! Yay, Shelly! I love, I love <laughs> this like, extremely polite applause. It's just so exciting. Say your... Oh, wait, who are you? I'm Greg Tito. Oh. Oh, it does not. We no. should do that at every table when everyone like comes to uh, <laughs> talk about their character. You're like, oh, I'm you know I'm a half elf ranger cool. named uh, Beelzebub. Yay! Hey, Beelzebub. Love I don't you. know why I chose Beelzebub. Don't know either. Not really a good half elf character name. Uh, you know you can't judge people by their names. It's true. Unless uh, it's like a name they gave themselves, and then I feel like you can. So like Cher, I don't know. That's not her real name. Oh, is, I, I thought it wasn't. Is it not her? I mean, Madonna. She chose that name, right? No, that's really her name. It's not her Swear real name. Swear to God, name. that is her name. Well, maybe. Madonna Louise Tacone. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. What I about Lady, Lady Gaga definitely made up her name. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> her real name is Bob Lady Gaga. Yeah. 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 Gaga's her middle name. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, you should pronounce it Lady Gaga. Gaga. The, the, the real uh, Italian way of pronouncing her name. Yes. Uh, we are here to uh, talk to an amazing person named Arnie Niekamp. Do you think that's his real name? No, definitely no. not. Right. Uh, but his real podcast is named Hello from the Magic Tavern. Love it. It's very funny. Uh, so Im good. Improv comedians doing all of the fun stuff. Wait, this is all. It is all improv, isn't it? It is all improv. Yeah. They, oh my god. They 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 know like a little bit about what the character is going to be, and then they just make it up from there. How is it so good it's every amazing. time? Because they're improv. They're people. They're good. So I can't wait to uh, you know pick his brain, learn all about uh, the the process where that yeah. uh, started. How uh, you know there's a lot of D and D crossover between uh, what's happening in the magical world of Foon uh, and all that fun stuff, and you'll find out what Foon is when we talk to, to I Arnie. I would like to visit Foon. I think it sounds fun. I want to. I want to find a Burger King in uh, Chicago. Be and, careful. And jump into that portal. If you go, make sure you have podcast equipment with you. That's a good call. Yeah. Ryan, I need all the podcast equipment I can need. I can get, and I'm going to put it in my pocket. He may or may not fall into a portal. That's true. You never know when you're going to fall into a portal. I mean, you know, you just climb into a wardrobe or... Uh, but you know. there is a Burger King in Foon <laughs> with Wi-Fi. No, I think the portal is in... The Burger King is in Chicago, but... No, they can still... The Wi-Fi still reaches the through the portal? The, yeah, That's exactly. why it's weak. It's very weak, right? Oh. And they have to recharge all of his laptops and all of his stuff. <laughs> Uh, if, if it sounds like what we're talking about is, is slightly ridiculous, that's because it, it is. It will make sense, though. It yes. will make sense. It's good stuff. You'll love it. We have been talking about Ghosts of Saltmarsh because it is an amazing adventure that's coming out May 21st. Uh, yep. There are two covers for it. One has an amazing uh, piece of artwork that was created by Gregor Zrutkowski. That's you. That's me. Yeah, yeah that's my, my alter ego. Um, but it looks amazing. A Sahuagin climbing up into a smaller boat with a kraken in the back on the waves, the roiling waves uh, behind there. Too many people on the boat. I love it. Um, and the alternate cover that is available only in game stores on May 21st uh, was created by N.C. Winters. And it's got that kind of soft touch Volo's Guide, uh, Xanathar's Guide uh, feel to it with some metallicness of a Sahuagin. Again, I see a theme. Uh, reaching out and uh, screaming and fangs and claws uh, all over it. It's very, it's very creepy. It's not good. It's not good. But it's a very cool looking cover. I will tell you that. Yeah. And again, you can only get it in game stores. So go check out uh, Ghosts of Saltmarsh. If you're interested in a preview of that, uh, Shelley played in a live streamed game, Dungeon Mastered by Mr. Chris Lindsay, uh, that uh, took an adventure from Ghosts of Saltmarsh yes. and uh, expanded upon it. Did yes. you have fun doing that? At Gary, at Gary Cunt? Yes, I did, actually. That is good. I played Flapper. Flapper. Yep. He was flying a lot. And uh, not shooting down people? Or that was your, your no, he sure did, shot? he did, too. Oh, sure shot. Sure shot. Yep. She shot down people, too. I like that character. I need to play her again. Yeah. I like that you're basically a beastie boy. <sighs> yeah. Rocking the sure shot. Oh. Yeah. Every D&D &D character should have a theme song. Oh, my God. I love this. Especially one that's not, uh, um, you know, protected by copyrights. <laughs> but at your table. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at your table. Just think about that. What would your D and D character's theme song be like when they walk out um, onto the adventure grid? 
dancing on the ceiling. Oh, that would be good for you. That'd be good if it was like a bard or some kind of an acrobat. Uh, yeah, definitely. Or a spider. Spider. Yeah, one who uses spider climb a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dancing on the ceiling. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. like it. What would flappers be? Flappers. Um, the wind beneath my wings. <laughs> <laughs> Lift you up <laughs> on eagle's wings. Yes. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. All right, I can see that. Speaking of flapper, yeah. did you look at what I posted on your Facebook page? No. The I have show. A, the, I have a Facebook the page? The Magic Garden. Oh, yes. I did see that. Yes. That is amazing. The show. The show, the show we were talking yes. about. Uh, yeah. It looks amazing. And I was like, definitely transported back. And then I was looking at Talk the- Magic portals. The magic portal, right? I went back in time. Yeah. Time travel is very hard. It is. Um, and then did you see, uh, when we were looking up images of those of those women, like where they are now, there was like a profile of what they look like now. And then comparing that for now, which I thought was just really, I really kind of cool. I feel like they'll always look like Karen and Paula in my mind. They're timeless. With and their long, they drink lots hair. of potions of, uh, of longevity in order to make that they happen. They hung out in the magic garden with a magic tree and a squirrel. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they drank lots of potions. So many you know potions. What I mean? <laughs> Uh, so we mentioned this last week when uh, Jim Zeb was here, but we want to make sure you get it. Uh, the Rick and Morty versus Dungeons and Dragons comic series. Yes. All four issues are out and now contained in a single omnibus issue. Uh, not even an issue, a book. A, uh, some a beautiful hardbound. Yeah, one. Yeah, there's a bunch of different versions. One is hardbound. One is uh, actually, I think there's two that are hardbound. And yeah, different covers. Hardbound is that lots what you of say? different hardcover. Hardcover. Sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that Pelham feel like. has an image. Pelham has images. Um, there are uh, again four different versions. One is a GameStop exclusive that includes an adventure written by Adam Lee in there. Um, there's yes. an original cover by Mike Vasquez, which was the front uh, first cover of uh, issue number one. There's a Barnes and Noble exclusive that is awesome, and it's got a, uh, a poster included in the back. They do a lot of different versions. Yeah, I know, I, and, I, and that's the way I love to consume. Uh, you know, comic books and graphic novels like that is just like in that in that like format. A bunch at like bulk. Yeah, a little bit more in bulk. You can you know you can still read it pretty fast, probably like in an hour or two. But yep. it's wonderful. Uh, if you uh, didn't hear our interview with Jim Zub, he can tell you all about uh, what it was like putting that together, as well as gosh, our previous interviews with uh, uh, Patrick Rothfuss and Jim. Uh, yes, all about we did. this back in uh, in back in September. Yep, it's great. It's really good stuff. Um, on the tip for uh, Ghosts of Saltmarsh, our friends at Beetle and Grimm's are putting together a sinister silver edition. You can get it pre-ordered now. Uh, it includes uh, more than 12 in-world documents and letters, a battle map uh, for uh, a whole bunch of different things, including different ships and two larger battle maps, a large area map, more than 30 encounter cards. These encounter cards are great. Uh, I think this is what they're referring to, but um, I started using those in my home game for, for Waterdeep Dragon Heist using their Platinum Edition box, and they have... Uh, it's like a big tent, essentially, with a fold in it. And you put that over your Dungeon Master screen, and on the front, it just has the image of uh, the monster or NPC that you're encountering. Like oh. Just the artwork. And on the back, it has you know, the name of what it is as well as um, all the stats and information for the Dungeon Master. So it's like this... I mean, a lot of people have used tents and things like that yeah. in the past, but this was just a great um, iteration to use official artwork, show that to your players in a way that's not... Like trying to cover it up with your hands or anything like that, um, but it's all right there in front I of you. I like and it's great. to see the artwork. I do too. When I'm playing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's as a dungeon master, it's great because I mean, obviously, uh, you know, I like describing things too. Right. But there's sometimes like there's a uh, a um, uh, a build up or a uh, you know a bottleneck of words when you're trying to. Make, it looks like a it's uh, it's, it's a goblin. Scary. It's just a goblin, all right. You know, or, uh, you know, and then you just kind of default. Even to goblins it. look different. Even goblins can look different. So having the artwork there and then. You know, if people recognize the artwork, that's one thing. But for people who don't know what that monster yeah, is, who have, like don't have an exhaustive knowledge of the monster manual, right. you know, it can be like, ooh, like that's me. scary. What is that? I don't know what its powers are. I have no idea what it does. But I know that it's got this 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 great image associated Sometimes with it. I feel like, I mean, I don't get a meta game. I don't think people should. But I feel like I don't know things that my character would, hmm. which is why, back to Jim Zub's books. Yes. The... Yeah, we're just going to yeah, talk about those. They're called those, the Young Adventurer's Guides. The Young Adventurer's Guides are going to be really helpful for people like me. Because yeah. they, the way that they describe the monsters um, with the beautiful artwork in there and just like a little background and history, like this monster would be found in this type of thing. And 
I have been known to maybe attack a monster with a spell that everybody else knows is going to have no effect on that monster. You have? Like, damn. I guess I should have known. I, sh- I should have well, tri- studied the monster manual. Well, more. trial and error is part of the part of the game. Also, I think. these monsters are totally made up. It's not like I know like what what happened. I don't. Know, I can't even think of an example. But whatever. I I know what you're you saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but, but I think that's part of the, that's part of the fun is seeing. Oh, that didn't work. Let me try something else. I know. Yeah. But then I also feel like there's five people at the table that are like, "Why would you have used lightning bolt?" Well, you know when you know, and the, you're, we were talking about metagaming before. Like there is uh, a large portion of that that we did in my three like long time three point five campaign where we would spend, you know, half of the session using divination spells to try to find out what we were going to be fighting. Oh, when we went in, yeah, you know, because we were such high powered uh, uh, cl- characters, we were yeah. up to like level 22 at some point. So we would like do all this divination to be like, are we gonna fight fiends? Are we gonna fight, you know, undead? Are we gonna fight these guys? Yeah, and then we would prep all of that stuff for the specific things that we were we were happening, you know. And so, you know, once you get higher level, you can start to do some of that stuff as, as a party as well. well. What do you do though, as a person, not the player, not the character, Ask the player? The Ask the DM, but but if you already know, like. I, I don't think my character would have this knowledge, mm-hmm. but I do. So I'm going to attack it in this way. Do you, or do you just pretend like, are you just super into like the character and the role playing that you're like, I feel like my character would not know this. I mean, it depends. In my opinion, I think there's definitely s- games in which, uh, you know, that type of meta gaming would wouldn't be as fun, you know, because yeah. you're like, oh, I know I know how to kill this. But I think if you're enjoying, you know, uh, the ignorance of your character, like. Lean into that and just play yeah. it as if you were, you know, it dep- you know all, like it, if you have a whole role-playing heavy group, you know, it can be really fun to be like, I'm the barbarian from, you know, another place. I don't know that I have to burn trolls. I, we don't have trolls where we are, right? right? That type of thing. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, that's that's another strength of Dungeons & Dragons is that, like, your party can then have those interactions like, no, crazy barbarian, you're supposed to be doing this. And, yeah. you know, isn't that? And then all of a sudden you have these character moments that inform and get everybody uh, caught up in the fun of yeah. that interaction, yeah. right? Which is half of what Dungeons Dragons is all about. Yeah. The other half is about drinking lots of coffee and Mountain Dew and uh, eating Cheetos. With chopsticks. You with chopsticks. As we learned from Greg Tito. It's a very fun thing. I've never actually done it, but I've seen people do it. Well, you're going to have to make branded chopsticks. Tobar does that, you know, sometimes when he's uh, eating at work. He does? Yeah, I've seen him with the, ch- with the chopsticks doing What's he it. eating? Um, like Cheetos or Doritos really or something does like that. This. And yeah, he had it. Yeah, he was doing <laughs> that. I was like, dude, I didn't even think about doing that at work because, of course, you don't want orange dust all and over your, your, your computer. Yeah. yeah, I know, right? So we mentioned the, uh, the Dungeons & Dragons Young Adventurer's Guides yes. as being great ways to get that kind of, you know, meta lore into the yeah. younger folks. Uh, we talked about it with Jim Zub last week, uh, but just to make sure it's all on everybody's radar, 10 Speeds Press. Ten Speed Press is putting these out. They're, you know, designed for ages eight to twelve, so early readers. But they're going to have tons of information oh, yeah. for for all ages. First two, uh, one is called Monsters and Creatures, Warriors and Weapons. Those are coming out uh, July sixteenth, and then two other ones will be following in the fall: Dungeons and Tombs and Wizards and Spells. I can't wait. New artwork uh, written and put together uh, by Jim Zub. Uh, you know, definitely a proponent and lover of the brand and Dungeons and Dragons lore and story in general. So you know, they're going to be pretty awesome, and I'm pretty psyched. And I'm very impressed with Ten Speed and their their products. That yeah, right. Out. Art and Arcana is like they're they get chef, it. Chef's kiss. They that's what I'm trying to do. They get it. I know exactly yeah. what you were. Chef's kiss <laughs> on that beautiful boat. It's magnifique. It's delicious. <laughs> I, I tried to so eat it. So delicious. Not very tasty, as it turns out. But um, uh, and then one final thing I want to get make sure everybody knows about because it's coming out soon. Dungeons and Dragons: A Darkened Wish, a new comic book series. Um, that is written by B. Dave Walters, awesome. who you know, and yes. Tess Fowler, who makes Love amazing it. artwork uh, and has for, for years and years and years in the critical role in other uh, communities. They teamed up. They're coming out. Uh, I, I believe That's it really is exciting. March 20th, I think. That's soon. Yeah. That's oh, like gosh. five days. I th- I, I, now I'm getting it all wrong, but I believe it is uh, 
the 19th or perhaps the 26th was their was their most. So it'll be in stores. Uh, it's going to be amazing. Look for it. I think the artwork uh, is superb, and I've been going be. back and forth working with Dave on some of the uh, the storyline stuff. Really? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't been working on it, but I've just been like, you know, it would be really cool if it fed into D&D's uh, storylines that may be coming out, and uh, you, know, you know what so it is. So if... I get this comic book in March. Can I maybe get some insights into the yeah. storyline? You might, if you're smart. If you roll a pretty good intelligence investigation checks, you might be able to do that. Okay. Sweet. Cool. Um, so we are uh, going to throw it to our wonderful segment. I believe we're speaking about some lore that you should know very soon. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go with the bing bongs. You haven't said that in a while. Yeah, where have the bing bongs Bong. Been? Bing. Well, it's different. Um, that was a long one. That was a longie. <laughs> that was a longie. <laughs> that is podcast lingo. <laughs> hey, Ryan, we're going to do a longie over here. That wasn't that long. Oh, really? I, I, oh, that's, that's not a We've definitely longie. had a 17 or 18 minute yeah, one in the past. That is not a. Wow. It's a sem- semi longie. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should stop. HR, hello. How's it going? Oh, you want to shut us down? Goodbye. (laughs) Oh, we're we're not doing this anymore. Okay. Okay, there you go. Great. I've got lots of meetings that I have to get to on the Ides of March. Call my friend. Tell I'm going to meet her a little early. Oh my goodness. Uh, Thank you again for everyone who bears with us and listens to all of our, our our silliness. We like you. Uh, we got to meet so many of our, uh, you know, I, I, is it weird to say fans? But like we saw people at GaryCon uh, and we were talking. That listen to Dragon Every Ball. once in a while, someone would be like, oh, I recognize your voice because yep. you're making fun of things with Shelly. And they're like, oh, oh, you sound just like you do on the podcast. Yeah. I'm like, well, I mean, we don't auto-tune or anything. So, of course, I would sound I, as the same. As much as I ask, nobody will change my voice. Please give me a new voice, Ryan. Why are you oh, saying? I don't like my voice. <laughs> a robot voice. You're like, no, I, I need <laughs> new voice. I will talk like this. <laughs> I'm trying out some new voices. What do you think? <laughs> 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 Wait, what is that? Was that Snarf from uh, Thundercats? What are you doing over there? Snarf. <laughs> Yes. The whole podcast. Banana. Is banana. banana. Oh, is <laughs> this is like the third time you've cried <laughs> on this podcast <laughs> from laughter. This is a really fun. Laughter? From laughter. Not laughter. <laughs> <laughs> I am dead inside. <laughs> Semi laughter. <laughs> I'm in pain. <laughs> Whew, I knew this was going to be a good one. You, you were feeling it. I was feeling it. You're really it. feeling Super it. Super exciting. Okay. Uh, we should do our mid-tro, huh? Yeah. While we're doing it? mid <laughs> Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> get, a, get a handkerchief and dab it. Get a dab it Make up. up. Make up. That was a really good, Lori Chanel. I feel like I, I know a lot more now. Yep. Yeah. You feeling it? Yeah. I think there's, there's always uh, good conversations to be had with Mr. Chris Perkins. Always. Yeah. He has a wealth of knowledge. Totally. And it blows my mind it's every time. It's probably good for him to have an outlet for that knowledge. It's not, you know, like just traditional knowledge that you can impart on just everybody. Yeah, right. You can't just meet someone at the grocery store and be like, did you know that uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that lizard folk were first introduced <laughs> in the fiend folio? Blah, blah, blah. You're like, you can't do that. You no. know, I mean, here in Seattle, you, you could, have a larger chance of that being, uh, you know, widely, you know, widely accepted. accepted. But, yeah. well, you know what? I'm going to scratch that. You should do that. Everyone should do that. They should spread the word about lizard folk and all of the different D and D lore at the grocery store, in uh, your library, in uh, your daily life. I see. Many you. of you probably already do. I see you checking out that pudding. <laughs> Did you know? <laughs> in D and D, isn't there like a pudding? Black pudding. Black pudding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. that's right. Not to be confused with blood pudding, which is a, uh, a dessert from the United Kingdom. Which actually. Should be reversed. Like blood pudding sounds like it that sounds come more from like a D and D monster. Black pudding is just like oh, like chocolate, dark right. chocolate. Exactly. Uh, I really like that you you actually worked it into the food that people are buying. I know that's smart. Come on, I'm sort of impressed by that too. Because <laughs> yeah. I would have just been like, oh, you know, let's just talk about it at the at the at the line. No, I, I I went 
I went there. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. All right. Everyone, trying. everyone try to strive to be more like Shelly is what I'm trying to say. I haven't even read those young adventurer handbooks yet. You're already in. You got it. I'm going to be so smart. We are going to, uh, l- let's talk to Arnie because I think there's a lot of things we need to ask him about uh, his life, his life choices, how he got to that Burger King. His life choices. His life choices. Uh, yeah, how he got to that yes. Burger King in, in, in the Chicago area and uh, fell into the magical land of Foon for yes. his podcast. So I can't wait. Okay. All right. Crushing it's it. It's a lot of dead time right there. <laughs> Crushing it. <laughs> this is always Nailed the best. it. Yeah, that's where we're both being like, oh, yeah, that was good. Wow. I'm really feeling that. I really liked that interview. <laughs> How come Shelly doesn't have an emote? You're right. Because I am not that's an not emotive right. person. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not true. Saying yes, you're like she crying. <laughs> you know, oh, like, I, I never show any emotion. I never get a chance to laugh any other time. Except for when we do. <laughs> I'm it? not allowed to laugh. Oh, that thing's funny. Shelly's emote is a banana. Banana. Oh. Banana. <laughs> oh, I, did you have some beans? Why, why are you bananaing over there? I didn't have beans today. <laughs> she said as if that was like record scratch. Oh, wait, I, I didn't have beans today. Oh, no. Excuse me. I have to go. I got to go consume some beans. Musk consume legume. We're off the rails today, guys. We're off the rails. Must consume legumes. <laughs> Is that Gollum? <laughs> <laughs> How did you break? How did you break? I don't know. What's happening? You're crying again. <laughs> oh my god. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I did. I threw the banana. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was over there. There's one over there too. Oh my gosh. Why are there banana peels <laughs> everywhere? <laughs> Are you guys doing this on purpose? We're playing Mario Kart. Mario Kart so that everybody can slip and banana, fall. Banana. Banana. <laughs> <laughs> <They're really> Legumes. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you all right? Did you get... You Ryan actually just got up to throw this banana peel at me. It broke the fourth wall. I think that I'm just going to put it with yeah, the put other. Put it on the pile banana. next to the other one. <laughs> big pile of bananas. And I'm sure Chris Perkins is going to come in and be like, what is going on? Why does on? it smell like bananas in here? <laughs> and he's like, do you know what that means? Because there was legumes uh, and, and other things. <laughs> it's our banana air freshener. Oh, right. Wow. Oh, gosh. Hi, everyone. I apologize. Basically, the entire <sighs> chat here is being like, what is going on? Sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm well, going to hold it together. Can you? I think we can do this. All right. We want to do our outro. We want to outro it up. Let's do it. We heard the clicks. Things are happening. Uh, this has been a very fun episode yes. of Dragon Talk. I think, I, I, for those of you who don't watch us live on Twitch, there has been hilarity happening here in the studio office. You should watch us live Luckily, Shelly is no longer crying from laughter. No. But there are, there's just crying. banana shrapnel all over the table. Uh, somebody threw a banana at me. <laughs> That banana shall remain peel. banana peel, correct? Yeah. Yes. Not like a banana. That'd that be would crazy. be crazy. That would be horrible. That'd be crazy. I think it fits really well with our uh, theme of uh, comedy improv podcast. Uh, it was great to talk to yes. Arnie and and pick his brain. I love um, uh, everything about you know comedy in general, but there's something about improv that is just great to be like, how, it's how so you scary. do it? And, it's so scary. Tell us about it. Um, I think if he, after he listens to this episode, he's probably going to ask us to join his his improv troupe i think he's yes yeah i mean it's it's a it's a moral imperative like this is probably the last dragon talk that we're gonna do because we're <laughs> gonna go on the road <laughs> and do improv improv banana all over the world yep or maybe you'll see us next week <laughs> at, exact- at this at this exact same time <laughs> as we do all the time uh well thank you for listening and bearing with us and all that fun stuff but would love to uh make sure everyone spreads the word about dragon talk if you can we're we're 
um, trying to do that uh, right now in this period, as we always do. But uh, you know, there's there's always good fun stuff for people to learn about Dungeons and Dragons, about the D and D community, as well as lore and uh, sage advice and our new random character yeah, generator. Uh, got a great segment. reception. Got a great reception. Yeah, we're going to do another one, uh, I believe, next week. Cool. Uh, we're recording that next week, so that should be great. Um, any other fun stuff that's going on in uh, Betrayal uh, Legacy? We were number four, right? Betrayal House on the Hill. Betrayal House on the Hill was number four. Of like board games. Board games. Sold in, sold in, in stores. In February, right? Yeah. Right? That's a great. Okay. Yeah. Amazing because it's like a. The company that it was in. Like to get to ride and. And Catan. And, and Catan, like all these like, like all heavy like, hitters. Yeah. Number yeah. four. Guess what? Betrayal is a heavy hitter. My baby. Your baby. My baby. Yeah. I was very proud to see it in there. It is good stuff. Um, And we need to play Betrayal Legacy. Hopefully next week we can finish up this haunt i know we've been in the same haunt for a long time we've had lots of travel back in and out so uh, yeah let's make it happen we're doing it we're doing it and then i think we should go to the next haunt right after that immediately immediately you know yeah. and try to bang it out like we're oh, we're so close we're, we're so, so close, close. <laughs> rab Dab, rab Dabio. and i know things, things that you guys don't know that it's gonna <gasps> blow your little minds you do i don't know like Everything, but, but you I know, know about some the components like, that are in there because yeah. you had to price them all out. I do know them intimately, and there's like something coming up that you guys better appreciate so much. Oh, we will. We're gonna appreciate you it. Better. I better. Okay. But you gotta give some signals so that we know what to appreciate. When I go like this. <laughs> when you start crying out of your eyes <laughs> with laughter, uh, that's how you're supposed to be appreciative. Yes. We can make it happen. All okay. right. Well, if you haven't uh, ever played Betrayal at House on the Hill or Betrayal Try Legacy. It. Perfect time to jump in. It is a really great board game uh, that blends the storytelling and choices that you have in RPGs, really. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, with a little bit more of a horror trope theme to it. Yeah. It's, it is amazing. You'll love it. And there's a betrayal at Baldur's Gate out there. If you like a little D&D with your board games. Exactly. Yeah. Got the same kind of feel and themes of, uh, of, of, uh, of betrayal, but adding in some fun D&D moments and tropes and classes and things like that. Yep. And, and special powers and spells. Yeah. Right. So you can play as a druid, as a bard, as a, yeah. as a, all those things. Do it. In betrayal. We should play Baldur's that again, Gate. too. We should. That's very I was just thinking game. about that. Yeah. yeah. Let's get in there. All right. And, uh, of course, if you want to find out everything about Dungeons & Dragons, you can go to the website, DungeonsAndDragons.com. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Wizards underscore DND. Uh, you can ask me any questions you want. I'm at Greg Tito. I will answer all of them, uh, especially you what's do? coming out next. If you want to ask, you know, I will always tell people about that, especially in a public forum. Uh, and, Shelly, what about you? What are, can people ask you questions about what's the next Avalon Hill game that's coming out? Yeah... Except I can't tell you. Oh. <laughs> Not for a I was being while. facetious. You but in general, you. do it at Shelly Moo on Twitter or Avalon Hill 2 on Twitter. On Twitter. Or we're both on Facebook. Facebook it up. Facebook it up. Yes. And uh, Dragon Plus has an amazing issue out for February. It is uh, an app that you can download on your Android or iOS device and get, tw you know, um, uh, really great articles, insight, interviews into stuff that's coming up with Dungeons and Dragons. There's yep. tons of Gold of Salt Marsh preview content oh. there now. Get so in there. Download it, uh, and it, it can get on your phone with some fun notifications when new things pop up. Yep. Or you can check out that content on DragonMag.com on the web, uh, accessible in your browser. And we also had a, a great conversation with Kate Welch about Salt Marsh. We did indeed. On yes, Talk. that right. That was that was two so weeks look ago. Look that up. Look that up. That was a super fun one. Delve into it. And the first time you guys did the random character generator. That was. Right? That's right. We recorded that um, two Fridays ago. Yeah. Please. And uh, we also talked about the WizKids Falling Star ship that's available oh, now. Yeah. Uh, two fifty available in game stores. So uh, cool. at, by two fifty, I mean not two dollars and fifty cents, but two hundred and fifty dollars. Definitely pricey, but it is worth the. Uh, de because of all the detail and uh, craziness oh, and ability to the play hours on, of I mean, entertainment. how many times have you wanted to have a ship like that and uh, uh, and use it when you're uh, in a D and D campaign high on, on the high seas? Like at least four, yeah. four times. And uh, now it, you have it available. To that's you. actually what I pictured when we played in the um, yeah salvage. Me too. Operation. Yeah. Operation. Me too. So, which what is it called? Salvage operation. Salvage operation. Yes, right. which is a chapter in Ghost of Saltmarsh. Yeah. 
That's uh, what I pictured in my so, head. So, yeah, you can look for that adventure that Shelly played in uh, on our YouTube channel, on D&D YouTube, uh, as well as almost all the stuff that we do uh, for the videos of Dragon Talk and uh, basically everything that happens from the D&D Twitch channel ends up on our YouTube page. So check it out. d and is everywhere. It's everywhere, people. Yep. Uh, how can people, oh, we already did your, your, your did you do your at Shelly Moo as well? Yep, all right, at Shelly Moo. Follow her. She's good. And him. Meh. He's good too. You know what else is really good is this uh, like loose stone that I see on the I roof of this like cavern. I feel like if you plucked that stone, it might not be the best idea for us. Well, why not? I mean, there might be tons of bananas behind it. I don't know if we should do that. Um. All right. Well, I'll let you do it then. I'm not going to do it. I think you should do it. Well, I don't think I should. <laughs> Oh my god, it's all it's covered in bananas. <laughs> I like that. I like that. See, that's improv yeah. comedy right there. We did I didn't know that you were gonna and a, and a callback. And a callback. Several callbacks. See, we we are professionals. I never get quote unquote. the rock. I know, right? Down. That's why I was like, I'm gonna give you lift you up, let you let you I feel like a part of this podcast. You now. like knock the rocks. Really yeah. excited. <laughs> Maybe, you maybe. haven't felt like a part before? <laughs> We've been doing yeah. this for like three years, and you're like, nah, nah, I don't feel like I'm really part of what's going on. I'm not really. Like, no, I'm just like the person who's available on Fridays. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. Oh, Zenark says we are masters of our craft. What is our craft, though? Uh, bananas. Banana. I, I, banana. I, I can make a really mean banana bread. It's really Ooh, good. And by that. mean, I mean it's angry. Like it gets, it like shakes its fist at you. And it's like, I don't want to go in the oven. <laughs> Hate you. <laughs> I'd be angry too. I know, right? Like, don't bake me. I'm delicious as is. Uh, it is a, uh, yeah. So that, that is, I don't know. Is that our craft? What's your craft? Beer. I backed something that was like a, 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 a cool sounding Kickstarter. Uh, I don't usually talk about you know, endorsing of fun things, but one of the amazing bits about it was how to integrate magic into crafting and more like day to day life for your Dungeons and Dragons character. And I was like, that's so cool. What? I know, right? I just I'm randomly remembering it. I don't know what it is, but it's uh it's it's really good. Okay. And I can't wait for it to come out. Cool. Everyone else should Did check it get it out. funded? I don't know. I, I was one of those like quick impulse fire and forgets. Uh and uh, and we'll see. But I, I just, just love that concept of like, oh, yeah, of course there should be, you know, not necessarily like domestic magic, but the idea of that, you know, in, in, a, in a high fantasy uh, setting that has magic everywhere. Like, of course, we'd use it to wash the dishes and make, you know, uh, weavers would use it, you know, to, to make cloth or, or things like that. And, you know, and I wouldn't do anything by myself. Right. If I had a mage hand. Oh, oh man. man. Get up, mage hand. <laughs> Get, up. Get up. Go give me a banana. Peel that banana. I don't care if you only have one hand. Figure Set. it out. <laughs> <laughs> Mage hand, set an alarm for 4 a.m. <gasps> Mage hand, set the timer for 14 minutes. Oh, my gosh. Now I want to like have an in-canon uh, uh, AI assistant, but it's it's a, it's my mage hand. I, I honestly would not be mean to my mage hand. I, I felt guilty just now when I was like, mage hand, go get me a banana. I wouldn't. I would be so nice to my mage hand. Yeah? I would hold it. Aww. I would hold its mage hand. Like when you're not... Just telling it to do random things, you just, just like, walk hey, down the street. Let's just hang out. My hand Aww. and mage hand. You can hand handheld. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's really kind of sweet. Yeah. Now, but I'm like, it, does it have a personality? Your mage hand. Do you remember? Is it like um, the thing from? Uh, that's what I was just gonna from say. From the Adams family. Thing? That's what I pictured. I've always pictured mage hand to look like thing. <laughs> Which yeah. is creepy. It is kind of creepy to think about it. Yeah. So what about hand? As Zenark says, what about unseen servant as a as a spell? Like that's basically doing the things that you're talking about doing where it's helping you out. Yeah. I would be nice to my unseen servant too. <laughs> yeah. As you would. Magic is amazing. Right. And also because they can see you, so you better be nice to them. That's true. Else. It would be yeah, that's kind of like maybe I want to see my servant. <laughs> I'm gonna cast a scene servant. <laughs> I feel, like, I feel like somebody's in here with me. I feel like I made that joke uh, when someone used that spell uh, on around a D&D table. We're like, why do they have to be unseen? Can't they just be... I mean, they can be can discreet. Visible servant, you know, visible, Discre but, just be but like, discreet servant. Yeah. 
You don't have to be unseen. I'm gonna research that spell. That's creepier now. We're gonna make it happen. I don't think they should be unseen. Agreed. Agreed. And uh, if you if you do or don't think that way, let us know in the chat, and we'll uh, we'll respond. Uh, but we're gonna take a little break, uh, and I need I need some coffee because I actually oh, brought no. in my coffee cup as a prop, but don't have any coffee in it. Unseen servant. Unseen servant. Bring me bring me some coffee. Uh, but I'm gonna go get that coffee on my own. I am my own unseen servant. <laughs> I am own. my own mage hand. That's like, I'm going to make that as my self-help book. I am mage hand. I am my own Be mage your hand. own mage hand. Be your own mage hand. <laughs> Life hack. Be your own mage hand. <laughs> Nailed that. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back in a couple of minutes, and we'll be talking to Arnie Niekamp from Hello from the Magic Tavern. Woo! Awesome. Be back in a uh, two and two. <laughs> 